The Kiowas Ka we, are a tribe of Native Americans. They migrated from western Montana southward into the Rocky Mountains in Colorado in the 17th and 18th centuries, and finally into the southern plains by the early 19th century. In 1867, the Kiowa moved to a reservation in southwestern Oklahoma. Today they are federally recognized as Kiowa Tribe of Oklahoma with headquarters in Carnegie, Oklahoma. The Kiowa language is still spoken today and is part of the Tanoan language family. As of 2011, update, there are 12,000 members. Name Kiowa call themselves Karigwu, Koragu or Gegu, most given with the meaning principal people. The first part of the name is the element K, Koragai which means the Kiowa themselves. It may derive from the word Ka, or from Kara. The true origin is lost. K Kia means a Kiowa man, K Ma is a Kiowa woman. The second element gua refers to men or people, so the meaning of the two elements is Kiowa people, to express principal people or genuine, real or true people. In Kiowa is to add the ending hin. Ancient names were Kajor or Kwu Dar and Tep Dar, relating to the myth pulling or coming out of a hollow log until a pregnant woman got stuck. Later, they call themselves K.O.N. Parbianta for people with large teepee flaps, before they met Southern Plains tribes or before they met white men. Another explanation of their name, Kiowa, originated after their migration through what the Kiowa refer to as the Mountains of the Kiowa in the present eastern edge of Glacier National Park, Montana, just south of the border with Canada. The mountain pass they came through was populated heavily by grizzly bear Kgyio and Blackfoot people. Other tribes who encountered the Kiowa used sign language to describe them by holding two straight fingers near the lower outside edge of the iron, moving these fingers back past their ear. This corresponded to the ancient Kiowa hairstyle cut horizontally from the lower outside edge of the eyes to the back of their ears. This was a functional practice to keep their hair from getting tangled as an arrow was let loose from a bowstring. George Catlin painted Kiowa warriors with this hairstyle. For a time, the Kiowa are thought to have shared land, mostly in present-day eastern Colorado, with the Arapaho. An Arapaho name for the Kiowa is Creek People, and the Arapaho word for Creek is Koawu which when pronounced carefully has some resemblance to the current name Kiowa. For example, the Kiowa are referred to as Creek people in an oral narrative recited in 1993 by native Arapaho speaker Paul Moss. Thus, it is possible Kiowa may have come from a name by which the tribe was known among the Arapaho language. The Kiowa language is a member of the Kiowa Tanoan language family. The relationship was first proposed by Smithsonian linguist John P. Harrington in 1910 and was definitively established in 1967. Parker Mackenzie, born 1897, was a noted authority on the Kiowa language, learning English only when he began school. He worked with John P. Harrington on the Kiowa language. He went on to discuss the etymology of words and insights of how the Kiowa language changed to incorporate new items of material culture. Mackenzie's letters are in the National Anthropological Archives on pronunciation and grammar of the Kiowa language. Additionally, Kiowa were one of the numerous nations across the U.S., Canada and Mexico that spoke plain sign talk. Originally a trade language, it became a language within its own right that remained in use across North America. Government the Kiowa tribe of Oklahoma is headquartered in Carnegie, Oklahoma. The tribal jurisdictional area includes Caddo, Comanche, Cotton, Grady, Kiowa, Tillman, and Washita counties. Enrollment in the tribe requires a minimum blood quantum of one-quarter Kiowa descent. As of 2011, update, the business committee is Chairman Amber Topper, Vice Chairman Luke Marth, Secretary Charlotte Bowen T. Treasurer, June Artichoka, Committee Man, Stephen Smith, Committee Man, Alva D. 
Soodle, Committee Man, Ricky Horse, Economic Development, the Kiowa tribe issues its own vehicle tags. As of 2011, update, the tribe owns one smoke shop, two casinos, the Kiowa Red River Casino, Morningstar Steakhouse and Grill, Morningstar Buffet, the Winner's Circle Restaurant in Devil, Oklahoma, and Kiowa Bingo near Carnegie, Oklahoma. Traditional culture. The Kiowa were patrilineal with a chiefdom living in semi-sedentary structures. They were hunters and gatherers, meaning they did not live in one area long enough to grow plants or crops, but did trade with sedentary tribes that grew crops. The Kiowas migrated with the American bison because it was their main food source along with an abundant supply of antelope, dare, wild berries, wild fruit, turkeys and other wild game. Dogs dragged travoir and rawhide par flesh that contained camping goods for short moves that were for long periods of time. With the introduction of the horse the Kiowa revolutionized their economy and when they arrived on the plains they were a fully mounted warrior nation. The horses were acquired from Spanish ranch areas south of the Rio Grande. The new Kiowa and Plains Apache homeland lay in the southwestern plains adjacent to the Arkansas River. River in southeastern Colorado and western Kansas, and the Red River drainage of the Texas Panhandle and western Oklahoma. Food The Kiowa were a nomadic hunter-gatherer society which mostly relied directly upon food available from the surrounding wilderness. The food hunted and gathered by the Kiowa was largely identical to that of other Plains Indians such as the Comanche. The most important food source for the Kiowa and all other Great Plains nations is the American bison or buffalo. Before the introduction of horses bison were hunted on foot and required the hunter to get as close as possible to their target before rushing quickly in and shooting it with arrows or lancing it. Occasionally the skins of wolves or coyotes were worn to hide their approach towards the bison herds. Hunting bison became far easier after the Kiowa acquired horses. Bison were hunted on horseback with bows and arrows, as well as long lances used to pierce the heart of the animals. Bison meat was eaten roasted, boiled, and dried. Dried meat was prepared into pemmican which was eaten while the people were on the move. Pemmican is made by grinding dried lean meat into a powder then mixing an near equal weight of melted fat or tallow and sometimes berries. The pemmican was then shaped into bars and kept in pouches until ready to eat. Certain parts of the bison were sometimes eaten raw. Other animals hunted to supplement the main diet of bison included deer, elk, pronghorn, wild mustang, wild turkey, and bears. During times of scarce game the Kiowa would eat small animals such as lizards, waterfowl, skunks, snakes, armadillos, and other animals that could be found and eaten. The Kiowa's horses, mules, and camp dogs were eaten during desperate situations when no other sources of food were available. Longhorn cattle and horses from American and Mexican ranches were also eaten during hard times. Most of the hunting was done by men in Kiowa society. Women were responsible for gathering wild edibles such as berries, tubers, seeds, nuts, vegetables, and wild fruit but could choose to hunt if they wanted to. Important specific food gathered by the Kiowa included pecans, prickly pear, mulberries, persimmons, acorns, plums, and wild onions. Domesticated crops such as squash, maize, and pumpkin were acquired by means of trading with and raiding various Indian peoples living on the eastern edge of the Great Plains such as the Pawnee that grew crops in addition to hunting and gathering. Before the use of metal pots acquired through trade and raid meat and vegetables were boiled in a hole dug in the ground, filed with water, and lined with a thick layer of animal hides. Heated rocks kept under a fire were added and removed to the boiling hole until the water came to a boil. Transportation and habitation The main form of shelter used by the Kiowa was the teepee or skin lodge. Teepees were made from bison hides shaped and sewn together in a conical shape. 
Wooden poles called lodge poles from 12 to 25 feet in length are used as support for the lodge. Lodge poles are harvested from red juniper and the lodgepole pine. Teepees have at least one entrance flap as well as smoke flaps at the top, allowing the construction of a fire pit within. The floor of the teepee is lined with animal pelts and skins for warmth and comfort. The teepee is designed to be warm inside during the cold winter months and cool inside during the warm summer. Teepees are easily collapsed and can be raised in only minutes, making it an optimal structure for a nomadic people like the Kiowa and other Great Plains Indian nations. The poles of the teepee were used to construct a travoir during times of travel. High paintings often adorn the outside and inside of the teepees with special meanings attached to certain designs. Before the introduction of the horse to North America, the Kiowa and other plains peoples used domestic dogs to carry and pull their belongings. Teepees and belongings as well as small children were carried with the use of travoir, a frame structure utilizing the teepee poles and pulled by dogs and later horses. The introduction of the horse to Kiowa society revolutionized their way of life. Horses were acquired by raiding ranchers south of the Rio Grande into Mexico as well as from raiding other Indian peoples who already had horses such as the Navajo and the various Pueblo people. The horse allowed them to pull larger loads, hunt more game, hunt game easier, and travel longer and further. The horse also transformed the Kiowa into powerful and skilled mounted warriors who performed long-distance raids on their enemies. The Kiowa were considered among the finest horsemen in history along with other Plains Indians such as the Comanche and Cheyenne. Horses became a vital part of the Kiowa economy and a man's wealth was measured primarily by size of his horse herd with particularly wealthy individuals having herds numbering in the hundreds. Horses became a much targeted object during raids. Capturing and stealing horses from enemies was considered a great honor to Kiowa warriors and often served as a rite of passage for young warriors. Horses were adorned with body paint from the medicine man for ritual and spiritual purposes such as good fortune and protection during battle. Kiowa horses were often decorated with beaded masks and feathers in their manes. In addition to horses, mules and donkeys were also used as means of transportation and wealth however they were not as esteemed. Socio-political organization the Kiowas had a well-structured tribal government like most tribes on the northern plains. They had a yearly sun dance gathering and an elected head chief who was considered to be a symbolic leader of the entire nation. There were warrior societies and religious societies that made up the Kiowa society. Kiowa government was democratic with the election of chiefs based on bravery and courage in battle as well as intelligence, generosity, experience, communication skills, and kindness to others. The ideal personality of the Kiowas was that of the young fearless warrior. The entire tribe was structured around this individual. The warrior was the ideal to which young men aspired. Because of these factors, the Kiowa was of utmost importance in the history of the Southern Plains. The women gained prestige through the achievements of their husbands, sons, and fathers or through their own achievements in the arts. Kiowa women tanned, skin sewed, quilled, painted geometric designs on par flesh and later beaded hides. The Kiowa women took care of the camp while the men were away. They gathered and prepared food for winter months and participated in events. Kiowa men lived in the families of their wives, extended families in residence, local groups led by the Jofoja Ki, which merged to become a band. These bands were led by a chief, the Topidoki. The Kiowa had two political subdivisions. Takina Yap or Thokari Ip, Thokahui, Salkari Ip or Salkahui, Oklahoma Panhandle and Texas Panhandle, allies of the Comanche. As the pressure on Kiowa lands increased in the 1850s, the regional divisions changed and a new regional grouping emerged. 
the GWA Kelliga or Gula Kora Gu Band of the Comanche. This Comanche band was known to them as Gula Gao, wild Mustang people, with which they were living in close proximity during the last resistance to white settlement on the southern plains. After the death of the High Chief Do Hassine in 1866 the Kiowa split politically in a peace fraction and a war fraction. The distinction between war bands and peace bands depended on their proximity to Fort Sill and the degree of interaction. Kiowa bands within the tipi ring during the annual sun dance. Kata or Kaja, Koga or Koga, Kaigua or Koregu. Kinip, Kibai Do, Kibador or Khe8, Kie, Kiet, also known as Kaugyabi Do, Kaugabidor, Semit, Same Hat Outside, Soy He Tal Pape, Sawador Taliope or Pai Dome Gor, Pari Dome Gu. During the sun dance, some bands had a special obligation which was traditionally defined. The Kata had the traditional right to supply the Kiowa during the sun dance with enough bison meat and other means. This band was particularly wealthy in horses, teepees and other goods. The famous principal Kiowa chiefs Dohassan and Lone Wolf were members of this band. The Koga were responsible for conducting the war ceremonies during the sun dance. Many famous families and leaders because of their military exploits and bravery, like Avdate, Satanta, Kicking Bird and the war chiefs Big Bow and Stumbling Bear, and others belong to this band. The Kaigu were the guardians of the sacred or medicine bundle and the holy lance. Therefore they were very respected by the other groups and enjoyed a special prestige. The Kinapur Khe8 were often called Sun Dance Shields because during the dance they observed police duties and ensured security. The chief woman's heart belonged to this band. The Semit were allowed to participate equally, but had no specific duties and obligations during the Sun Dance. The Soy He Tal Pape were often called Montaliwi or Ko Taliope, Ke Taliope, Ke Talioi. They were also named after the Kiowa cultural hero Sainda, Cindy and therefore called Saint Dayoi. To this band belonged the medicine man Malman T. Like the Semit, they had no specific duties or responsibilities. Enemies and warrior culture typical of all Plains Indian people The Kiowa were a warrior people that fought frequently with enemies both neighboring and far beyond their territory. The Kiowa were notable even among Plains Indians for their long-distance raids, including raids far south into Mexico and north onto the northern plains. Almost all warfare took place while mounted on horses after the introduction of horses into Kiowa society. Enemies of the Kiowa include the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Navajo, Ute, and occasionally Lakota to the north and west of Kiowa Territory. East of Kiowa Territory they fought with the Pawnee, Osage, Kikipu, Kaw, Caddo, Wichita, and Sac and Fox. To the south they fought with the Lipan Apache, Mescalero Apache, and Tonkawa. The Kiowa also came into conflict with Indian nations from the American South and East displaced to Indian Territory during the Indian removal period, including the Cherokee, Choctaw, Muscogee, and Chickasaw. Eastern tribes found that Indian Territory, the place they were sent, was already occupied by Plains Indians, most notably the Kiowa and Comanche. The Cheyenne and Arapaho would later make peace with the Kiowa and form a powerful alliance with them, the Comanche, and the Plains Apache to fight invading settlers and U.S. soldiers as well as Mexicans and the Mexican army. Like other Plains Indians, the Kiowa had specific warrior societies. Young men who proved their bravery, skill, or displayed their worth in battle were often invited to one of the warrior societies. In addition to warfare the societies work to keep peace within the camps and tribe as a whole. In total, there are six warrior societies among the Kiowa, one for children and five for adult warriors. All young Kiowa boys were enrolled in the Rabbit Society which served mostly for social and education purposes involving no violence or combat.
Four adult societies of the Kiowa are the IAH Pa Society, Oho Ma Society, Kiowa Black Leggings Society and the Kiowa Gourd Dance Society. The most elite warriors of the entire Kiowa were part of a special society called the Koitsenko or Real Dogs. The ten members of the Koitsenko were democratically elected by members of all four adult warrior societies. Kiowa warriors used a combination of traditional and non-traditional weapons including long lances, bows and arrows, tomahawks, knives, and war clubs as well as rifles, shotguns, revolvers, and cavalry swords. Shields were made from tough bison hides stretched over a wooden frame or made from the skull of bison which made a small but strong shield. Shields and weapons were adorned with feathers, furs, and animal parts such as eagle claws for ceremonial purposes. Kiowa calendars The Kiowa people told James Mooney that the first calendar keeper in the tribe was Little Bluff, or Towhausen, who was the principal chief of the tribe from 1833 to 1866. Mooney also worked with two other calendar keepers, Satan, or Little Bear, and Anko Ping Yadit, in the middle of many tracks, commonly known as Anko. Other Plains tribes kept pictorial records, known as winter counts, however the Kiowa calendar system is unique recording two events for each year, offering a finer-grained record of the passage of time in twice as many entries for any given period. Silverhorn, or Hamga, was the most highly esteemed artist of the Kiowa tribe in the 19th and 20th century and a respected religious leader in his later years.